It's okay for me to be out here? I'm not going to mess up your filming. Okay. All right. Thank you. I'd just rather not be in, at the podium. Um, John, you set up my talk beautifully, uh, uh, talking about religious multiculturalism, which is now a, an aim of allied different disparate religious traditions. Um, so the theme is, why is the inclusion of creationism and intelligent design still a viable proposal um, for American biology curricula? Well, this is the reason we usually give. It's because Americans are so scientifically illiterate. This was a 2006 survey done uh, in Science Magazine, was done by Eugenie Scott, among other people, that showed that among the 34 countries surveyed, we are second only to Turkey in the number of adults who reject evolution. Okay, but now that, that's the traditional explanation, but I'm going to show you another one. I'm going to take this to another level, which ties in beautifully with what John was, there we are, with what John was saying. In other words, I want to show you that creationism intelligent design is simply the logistical contribution of a certain group of people within a much larger effort, okay? And, and which is only incidentally about creationism. It's, and so I'm going to use... Uh, Molly Ivins used to say that Texas was the incubator for every bad political idea anybody ever had. Well, Louisiana is where we put them all into, into action, right? Okay. So, in 2008, um, Bobby Jindal signed the Louisiana Science Education Act, which is a, a stealth creationism uh, law. And I'm not going to take you through it in great detail because I want to get on to some other things. But what the law does is to use the ruse of critical thinking to target evolution, the origin of life, global warming, and human cloning. All the bad stuff that the religious right doesn't like. And if you want to see an analysis of the law, you can go to my website. Actually, it's the website for the Louisiana Coalition for Science, but I'm the only one who ever does anything on it. And go to lasciencecoalition.org and use the search box, type in SB, Senate Bill 733, analysis. You can find a PDF that will analyze that law in great detail. And of course, you all know who the Discovery Institute people are. They were very much involved. This was, the Louisiana Lies is a version of their model bill that they were promoting in different states around the country. So they were very heavily invested in this through their creationist wing, the Center for Science and Culture. But they were working with the Louisiana Family Forum, which is an arm of focus on the family in Louisiana. It's the Louisiana affiliate. Gene Mills is the executive director. I'm going to say a lot about him. Uh, one of the co-founders, who now calls himself a consultant, is Daryl White, a former Baton Rouge City Court judge. And their website announces their mission to persuasively uh, present biblical principles in the centers of influence. Well, the center of influence for the Louisiana Family Forum is just a few blocks from their office. It's the Louisiana State Capitol and the fourth floor, the governor's office. So they worked with a number of senators and they got this bill passed. Um, they're the senators, you don't have to worry about who they are. But Gene Mills and Daryl White were the chief engineers of this legislation working with the Discovery Institute in Louisiana. And if you want to know about the Discovery Institute, here we go, shameless, shameless promotion again. Um, you can learn about them in the book that I did with Paul Gross, Creationism's Trojan Horse. Uh, but you can also download from the Center for Inquiry website the paper that I wrote for them it's called Understanding the Intelligent Design Creationist Movement is True Nature and Goals. You don't even have to pay for that. You can get it for free, right? And I think it's still up, so you can get it. So the, I want, what I want to talk about is how Gene Mills, working through the Louisiana Family Forum, has acquired an extremely, uh, he's probably one of the, it, that is probably the most powerful political, non-oil and gas related political interest group in the state, okay? <laughs> And so Gene Mills and Daryl White worked with Ben Nevers, who was the senator who sponsored the bill. They worked with the creation, I mean, the Discovery Institute. They had a guy, uh, Representative Frank Hoffman, in the House of Representatives who helped them. And they had a point man on the Louisiana Board of Elementary and Secondary Education. But the linchpin was Bobby Jindal. He was the key to this whole plan because the legislation would have been useless if they had not had a governor that they knew would sign it and they knew that he would, and you're going to see why they knew he would. 
Gene Mills is, he's the president and one of the co-founders of the Louisiana Family Forum. He's a Pentecostal Assembly of God minister, although that affiliation only came out in the media about six months ago. He never ever says what his affiliation is publicly, but I think there's a reason that now he's letting it be known. And so what he does, he's networked with Dobson and all of the, the state policy councils that are affiliated with Focus on the Family and the, and the Family Research Council with his fellow Louisianian, Tony Perkins, who you'll see later in a minute as well. And he's, he's, he's very politically influential, and you'll see that in a minute. And so what he wants to do through the Louisiana Family Forum is to engage the culture and restore the biblical foundations of the United States. Now, you're going to see how closely allied with Bobby Jindal he is. This is a New York Times article in June 2008. One person in the media, only this guy, Alan Nossiter, with the New York Times, who was stationed in New Orleans, put the, put the dots together and showed the close relationship between Jindal and the Louisiana Family Forum. This is the Louisiana Family Forum's own PDF copy of that article that they sent around to their followers. All the underlines are theirs, and this is one of their favorite parts. Reverend Mills has become a frequent presence in the legislative halls, and Bobby Jindal is seen at their office as one of the family. Right? That's how close they are, but I'm going to show you even more. Okay, you need to know this background about Jindal. Jindal has used his, his religiosity, he's made it part of his political persona. He campaigns in churches, right? He continues to go to church using the state helicopter on the public dime every, almost every Sunday. Here he is during his campaign being prayed over in a church in my parish, Livingston Parish. Uh, that's an Assembly of God church, I believe, there. Des no, that's Destiny International Church. God only knows what that is. Okay, but it's, all right. There he is in 2008 witnessing and being prayed over in the first, first Baptist church in many Louisiana. See the kids all touching him, there's the back of his head, you know. The hand thing is always a constant, you know, you've got to touch him when you pray. All right. Here he is, this is at the governor's mansion. That's, that's a, a breakfast or something, there he is being prayed over at the governor's mansion. There's, there's a larger picture of the group. All right, and here he is witnessing in another church in my parish in Denham Springs, Louisiana. And he is Catholic. Okay, so this is an example of what John was telling you. And in fact, I, I dug that photograph out of the trash in my computer and stuck it back in my slides while he was talking because I wanted you to see. <laughs> I wanted you to see that here is an ultra right Catholic governor who goes to church almost every Sunday in Baptist churches in North Louisiana, right? Okay, and when he was elected in November two thousand seven. The Louisiana Family Forum gave this great big gala for him at the old state capitol. And that's a Christmas gala. You'll see there that he's being prayed over in the center, presided over by Gene Mills, right? There he is, undergoing the laying on of hands in front of hundreds of people, including almost every living former governor, okay? So this is how tight they are. And Gene Mills was written up by a, a, a well-known political reporter, Jeremy Offord, in Politics Magazine, which is published, I think, here in D.C., as one of the top ten Republican influencers in Louisiana, right along with Mary Madeline. You all know who she is, right? She lives in New Orleans now, by the way. And Timmy Teeple, the governor's right-hand man who helped get him elected. That's how much power Gene Mills has. And his power is, it, it, it's, it culminated with the election of Jindal. And so he has so much power that he can almost get a bill passed or killed just by walking into the room. I, I'm not kidding you. And I'm just giving you the tip of the iceberg. This is a, 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 a bill that outlawed certain types of stem cell research. It's the outlawing, they called it the human animal hybrid bill. There you go, in 2009. And it's, it's one of the things that outlaws is a particular type of research that was pioneered in the UK by an American scientist named Stephen Menger. It was to, it was to get over this, the difficulty of getting human ova, right, and using them to create stem cell lines. In fact, this guy actually created one of the first stem cell lines in, in the UK. He's back over here now. He works for GE. But it, was, it involved using a bovine ovum, stripping out the, the genetic material and, and putting human DNA into the egg and using it to create stem cell lines in an attempt to overcome the ethical problems associated with getting human ova and the, the technical difficulty. So it, it was licensed in the UK. But if, if a scientist 
any place in Louisiana does this kind of research, that scientist is going to be imprisoned at hard labor for, for not more than 10 years and fined not more than $10,000 or both. And Gene Mills and his organization strong-armed the scientists in Louisiana who are fighting this bill and said, you either take this one or you're going to get one that's worse, right? And so we, they got this bill passed. The other thing they did was to kill, Gene Mills killed a bill that was introduced this year to prevent bullying, right? And only one aspect of this bill had anything to do with sexual orientation. But Gene Mills, these were the different things, religion, ancestry, national origin, including sexual orientation, but that's only one thing. Gene Mills shows up and just simply walks in the room and gets this bill killed, right? And it, he, called, he labeled the bill the homosexual bullying bill. And when he was interviewed about it, he thought it was really funny. Oh, this is amusing. All I did was walk in and drop a floor note, okay? But this is the kind of power this man has just by showing up, and in, in, there he is at, at a Senate Judiciary meeting. Okay, now this is, this is more close to home to me because it's Election Day in Louisiana, and this guy is my state senator, okay? <laughs> now, he did not get my vote, but neither did the other guy, and I'm going to show you why. But he answered the Louisiana Family Forum does questionnaires, and he filled out the questionnaire, right? But he knew he was not going to get their endorsement, and this is why. This is Dale Erty, Senator Erty, and he says, I've voted with you guys, I have a proven voting record, but I know such an endorsement is an impossibility since a board member of your organization is running against me, and he's right. The vice chairman of the Louisiana Family Forum is running against him. His name is Derek Babcock, and he's the vice chairman of the Louisiana Family Forum board. They've got their own candidate in the race. Now, I don't, I'm not sure he's going to win, but they've got their man in the race. And here's another example. You, you, there are legislators who are literally using their affiliation and endorsement by the Louisiana Family Forum as a selling point. There's a guy named Bodie White. There he is with Bobby Jindal. And there he is. He ran this ad in my local paper just this week um, with Gene Mills. There he is. So this is the power. These people can, can if, if they go against you in an election, you're going to have to spend a lot of money to keep your seat, right? Um, so there Gene Mills is with his, with his buddies, right? Um, Tony Perkins, and, who's buddies with Bobby Jindal, uh, runs the Family Research Council. And there is Bobby Jindal at the Legislative Awards Dinner that the Family Forum does every single year. And he, he goes almost every year. He's missed one or two when he was out raising money or something. But they're all three working together, right? And the Louisiana Family Forum puts out a legislative scorecard, right? And they score very high the people who vote their way and very low the people who don't. They give out Patrick Henry awards. I think that's a little bust of Pat Patrick Henry every year after the end of the session. And they, and they give out awards to legislators who are pro-family. And there's Tony Perkins. He did a video uh, congratulating them on all of this, you know, influence that they've acquired. And here they're giving their Gladiator Award this year uh, at the Legislative Award Dinner to Kyle Duncan, who's the appellate chief for the Louisiana Department of Justice. Now, why is he getting this award? Because he was the person who, who helped argue against um, the law in Louisiana that was designed to, to prohibit that this man here, Oren Adar, he and his partner, they, they live in California, but they adopted a um, they were in New York at the time. They adopted a baby born in Shreveport, and they wanted both of their names put on the baby's adoptive, I mean, a birth certificate. And the state of Louisiana would only put one father's name, and a law was passed to prohibit gay couples from having both of their names on the baby's birth certificate. Well, this, this guy here argued the state's case against that in, in the court. And here's the, the kitschy wooden gladiator sword that they gave him with his name on it and everything. So they are cultivating the highest most some of the highest levels of power in the state, okay? And there they are, um, and Gene Mills was in Washington last year praying over, at their, they have leadership a, a academy for young people, praying over Representative John Fleming from Louisiana, the guy who said on national TV that after he pays all his bills, he only has $400,000 left to, to live on, okay? And here is Mills delivering the opening prayer in May of this year on the House of Representatives uh, here in, uh, in D.C., okay. Now, they branched out. They had some kind of meeting called the Consequences of Truth meeting um, earlier 
uh, this year, in fact it was in August, I believe, yeah, August, timed to coincide with the American Legislative Exchange Council meeting in New Orleans. I can guarantee you that they were at that meeting helping to write legislation. And the people that they brought in, the speakers, were Charles Coulson, there's his mugshot, you all know who he is, right? Okay. Uh, Robert George, who uh, used to be on George W. Bush's Bioethics Council, he runs the James Madison Program in American Ideals and Institutions at Princeton University. It's kind of a right-wing think tank, you know, for cultivating like-minded people, giving them fellowships and, and you know, some um, status as a result of this. And also Timothy George, who's the, um, a dean at the Beeson Divinity School and editor of Christianity Today. So they're bringing in people from out of state, and I think they're bringing these people in to influence the writing of legislation because I've only showed you two or three examples of the bad legislation that, you know, that... And they were the drafting committee of the Manhattan Declaration. Now this is an extension or an update of a document called Evangelicals and Catholics Together that was adopted in 94, which uh, signaled a coalition of evangelicals, Protestants, and Catholics to work together politically. This updates it by adding Orthodox Christians to the mix and it's pro-family, pro-life, and anti-gay. So they, they brought these guys into Louisiana. Uh, they're networking um, nationally. And there is Gene Mills last year in New Orleans as a, a featured speaker at the Southern Re uh, Republican Leadership Conference. So he is a blatantly partisan uh, political operative. But he also has the support of quite a few Democrats in Louisiana. But you can see that he has achieved a great deal of uh, power to, in to push his religious agenda by cultivating overt, blatant political power in Louisiana. So now, Simon asked me if I'd put in something about what people might do to counteract this kind of stuff. Well, you can join organizations and support them, like the Center for Inquiry, where, where you are now. You can also join um, the National Center for Science Education and support the work that, um, that they do to protect science education. You can also join uh, Americans United for Separation of Church and State and promote the work that that organization does. But it's also important that you act locally. And in Louisiana, we finally do have an organization that is trying to counteract some of the damage, although it's a broadly based organization. It's the Coalition for Louisiana Progress that is addressing a host of problems in Louisiana, but our chief bogeyman is the Louisiana Family Forum. And, but it literally took somebody quitting her job. Melissa Flournoy is the executive director. She literally quit her job to get this up and running and devote herself full time to this, because that's the disadvantage that we have on the secular side we don't have an affiliate in every state with a full-time director beating the bushes for money and hanging around in the legislatures all the time. But this is how Gene Mills got the level of power that he has. So if you weren't scared enough after John got through, you ought to be plenty more scared and you ought to be very glad that you don't live in Louisiana, right? Because then you'd have to help us fight this stuff. Okay, thank you.